Hi everybody, welcome, welcome back. I'm so glad to be here with you guys today. Um, not much has happened uh, this past month. We only had um, some hot weather, like we had 12 degrees last week, and then yesterday it went down again to, I don't know, minus 14 or something like that. And it's nice that a lot of the snow melted, but what happens is that now we have a skate ring in our driveway. So it's kind of treacherous. What we do is we normally like to spread uh, the ashes from the wood stove there and that helps a little bit, but it is treacherous. On the other hand, it's beautiful outside. Uh, we are having much more sun. We also have some solar heating systems that are now working every day. We have uh, it pumping some heat in the house, so it's good. We don't need to use the wood stove all the time. It's nice. It's it's beautiful. It's it's really nice. But nothing out of the extraordinary happening here. So I do have a lot to show, and I'm gonna go straight to it. Um, I will start with the finish products that is my sweater from Paula um, so what I liked about knitting the sweater is the construction it is very easy you don't need to think too much uh, you start in the round and you just work with short rows to make the the back a little bit higher and then you do the yoke and after that, it's just kneading. I did some changes because my gauge was not exactly the gauge recommended in the design. Um, I did put some extra, I think six extra collar lines here so that I would get the, the needed distance. And the other thing that I changed is instead of putting pockets in the bottom, I did the same color work that there was for the sleeves in the bottom of it. And I like it. I have already worn <laughs> it a little bit because it's nice. It's not too hot. It feels good. It really feels good. So um, even though I'm not uh, an acrylic person or synthetic person, and this has 60% synthetic, uh, the fiber feels very soft, synthetic feels soft, and it's, it's good. It was really good. So I'm very happy with this. So this is my first finished project, and I'm very happy. Then, um, because it, it's not a, a, you don't need to think much to do this, this sweater. And I, I feel that this past month, I don't know why, I just wanted um, projects that were mindless, that I could do watching TV. Talking about TV, I follow Amy, she's from Scotland, and in her podcast she mentioned, I'm going to put a link to her podcast, I like it very much, she's very calm, um, very nice, and I love her projects too. And she was mentioning uh, Death in Paradise, and I looked for it, and I'm binge watching it, and I think because I want to watch it, I don't want to think to need. I, I want projects that I can do it without thinking. So I started a lot of projects. There is, uh, I've been now listening a lot of Brazilian um, podcasts or Brazilian Portuguese podcasts. And there is this Brazilian teacher that she put a challenge, five shows in five days. And the thing is, Funny enough, I was looking at my Craftsy, and there in the Craftsy, they have uh, 16 shawls or 14 shawls that you do that is more or less the same principle. They, what you do is just miniature shawls. But I didn't want to do miniature shawls. Uh, I didn't see the point of it, even though it was for you to see, not to make the shawl, but to understand the format of the shawl. And so I did this one that was a simple one, and I think it turned out really, really nice. Um, so once you understand the format that you start here, you increase and then you decrease, 
After that, even if you if you want, you can add uh, a lace in the bottom or here, right? So I really liked it. I thought that it was nice. I don't have a tendency to wear too much shawls and stuff. So this is probably going for my Christmas bag for gifts. So I really liked it. I liked the color. It was a uh, merino yarn that I have dyed, uh, crock pot dyed long ago. And it was there sitting and I said, eh, let me use it. And honestly, I think it turned out really, really nice. I really love it. So this is my second finished project. Um, then I have my socks. So I finished my tartan socks and uh, the other pair is here. <laughs> and I wanted to, I did a video on this. So um, if you want to see how to do it, you can go to the video. The only thing I forgot to say in the video is that um, when I was doing my heel, I was doing wrap and turn. And when I do, did wrap and turn to do the short rows, this part here got the gray on the top. So on the other foot, what I did instead of using wrap and turn, I used German uh, short rows method. And by doing that, then I had the green all over and no, no problem. So this is one finished project. The other finished project is my other sock that is on my foot. And the reason I put it on the foot is because these socks are arch socks and it's a free um, pattern. I'm going to see if I can find the link because I, I downloaded this long ago. I did once for my husband a pair, but I noticed that I made a mistake in the second sock. So this time what I did is I knitted both socks at the same time and I did that and I think the, um, the toe is it's a special toe that Nancy Bush has. So I will also put a link in there. We've has the recipe. It's an easy one, but it, it takes a longer period for you to finish because you start decreasing, it has to be a multiple of eight, and you have, you start the decreasing um, by decreasing one, like knitting six, two together, then you do six rows, and then you do knit four, two together, and you do five rows, and, and you go like that. But I will put a link for both, for the socks and the toe. And I think it's very interesting. So if you see it on the hand, I thought it wasn't going to show as well as if you see it on the foot. So that's why I put it there. The other thing I wanted to talk about is that uh, I got this beautiful yarn at uh, Knit 3 Together and the yarn is, is uh, it's wool from Peru. And the thing is, when you have this hand dyed, uh, this, this dyed kind of yarn, it looks very beautiful in the, in the yarn itself, in the skein. And in this case, I, I do love it too. Um, it made like a spiral. If, if you see the brown goes round and then comes down and goes on down. So it made a spiral, but you never know how it's going to really uh, work because lucky sorry my dog is grumpy so you never know how it's going to work because it depends on on what you're needing so this effect was great with the socks but it probably wouldn't be the same effect if i needed a sweater with with the yarn but this one turned out really nice it's very soft i like it very much Okay, so then also with the, well, I guess 
that was almost it for, for finished. So finished, let me go here first. So I dyed my yarn that I had spun and I dyed the gray that I wanted. The yellow turned out really nice. I really like this yellow. And the green was okay, but when I put it this, this two, it looks nice here, but I needed a sample and for the, the sweater that I want to make. And it didn't look well. It didn't, I didn't like the final result. And this is the second sample. So the first sample I had used the dark uh, purple with the um, violet and it completely disappeared. It didn't look good. So I did this, but still it doesn't look good with the gray here. So I think I need a kind of a brown or, or an orange to complete the pattern to make it look better. And I will have to change what I did. So that means that right now I have all this basket full of four ply yarn. This I don't have enough to use in the pattern, but I like the green. So I thought I would um, add just one line in between the pattern just to make it to use it but maybe not but the thing is I have a lot of fiber here and I will have to spin a lot more and dye to be able to finally do my project what is okay because I know I can knit a lot of stuff afterwards so, but I have a lot of spinning ahead of me of this Cordae Merino 4-ply. Luckily for me, I bought 30 kilos when I, my sister came from Brazil last time. I don't have 30 kilos anymore. I, I must have maybe, I don't know, five. I don't know. I don't really know how much because I sold a little bit and, and I worked with some other projects. Um, but I have a lot, I have enough, I can do a few sweaters with them. So, so that's it with my finished projects. And what I have is still on that shawl thing, that is the, the challenge. I have this other shawl that I did it, I just cast on a number of stitches, I didn't think much, and I did it because I wanted to know. It's not finished, I think, because I think I'm going to add, and I used a bunch of yarn, but I do have uh, still a lot of this yarn, and I think I'm going to do uh, a lace edge here. I was thinking of doing crochet because crochet is easy, but I can pick up the stitches with a crochet needle because that's my preferable way of picking up stitches and and make a, a a border here and that would make the the shawl bigger because it's not too big at this point so i think it needs to be bigger to be nice but the interesting thing is that the way you do this shawl and i wanted to do uh, to do stripes because I wanted to see how the stripes would look when you knit it like this, you knit on the bias. But what you do is you start the whole process here, right? You enter the number of stitches that you have and then you start decreasing the stitches. You de decrease each front row because you, you need front and back. You're going to decrease four stitches. And that's the result. I thought it was pretty cool. And when you when you block it, this part on the top will probably be be more straight. But I also liked it like this. If I could make, I could even make something to 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 block it like this. And then you have a, a shawl that covers everything, and it's a shawlette. I, I kind of like it. So I'm still thinking what to do on the border. And this is a project that can stay forever here. I don't care. It was just to use some 
some yarn and like it's not a priority but it was cool to study the shawls then i am working on on my Versailles shawls that is the the shawl that that uh, Chris Sheep made and she's using the show as a way to raise funds to treat her cancer for her cancer treatment and I made a boo-boo and I, I was stuck but now I figured what I did I didn't read the pattern correctly I thought that if I just follow the the chart it would be okay but there is a part in the chart that you have to do repeats vertically too and then it will work but the interesting thing here is that like this show you have you start with all the stitches and then you decrease four and the show is starting like this okay so um it gets closer and closer to the end this is the end of the show and this is the opposite. So um, you started with a few stitches here and you go on and you go on. And then the beginning will be the straight part of the show. The rest is going to be here. So it's the opposite of the other one. Um, also, knitting this show makes me uh, have a more consideration to designers because there are some things that you are needing that it's an easy one to understand the structure and where the designer is going with the stitches and everything. And I didn't get it from the shawls. Maybe it's because I didn't need enough shawls to be um, that good. So the other shawl that was on the five days challenge was a simple shawl that you just start here and you increase one on each side all the time all, all the right rows and you're going to get a triangle and i have two of these yarns that i spun maybe 10 years ago or something it's not my best uh yarn but i thought that for this kind of show it turned out the the, the color the striping mixed up i think it turned out nice so this is a nice shawl to get when, when I am not, just want to watch TV and, and go ahead, right? So I have another one of this and this is a good way to use it. And this will probably go for my Christmas bag too. Um, then I have this thing now that I want to finish with yarns when I'm knitting and so I had leftovers for my sweater and I do want to make uh, a lot of children's sweaters to give and it can be if I if I have a children a, a child around oh I forgot <laughs> I'll talk about this so um but I started this and this is a very interesting thing for me um, I went to drops design they have uh, a lot of free designs there and I used a bunch of them and um, it is to wear to use with their yarns but they are in Norway so it's a little bit trickier to get their yarn although I do want to do that um, but I decided to do this one so they are from Norway and of course they have a tendency to do Norway dish color work and I kind of like it it's so much less stressful to do because you don't have a lot of colors coming out I like the final effect um, the back of the the project was okay so very few areas had five stitches that I had to um, to take care of the floats so that they wouldn't be too big but in general it was two or three stitches so it's nice and it's going to be warmer on the chest 
for the child. Um, one thing is that I've been watching uh, a bunch of podcasts and they talk about yarn chicken. And I have never heard uh, the expressions before. Lucky, Lucky, come here. Good boy. So I noticed that I have a tendency to yarn chicken. Like I had a fiber that I spun that I needed twice the sweater. First time it ended because it was a, a, a bottom up sweater. I needed just a little bit to finish it, but I didn't have any more of the yarn. And, and then I needed again with a different color border. I didn't like, so then I undid it and I did something else with it. And when I saw this, I wanted to finish off the yarn that I had. And I thought it asked for 300 grams. I had 200 and something grams of the blue, but it asked for 50 grams of the light blue and I had more than 50 grams. So I thought, ah, I can work it out and I will work it out somehow. But um, it's again, the stress of yarn chicken on this because I might not have, have enough. So what I'm going to do is I have just this of blue. I'm going to knit the, the sleeves as much as I can, both sides, to, to, to have it up to here. And then I will start using the light blue uh, at the end to, to finish the sweater. But it's a nice sweater and I think it would be great for a child. I also made a mistake right here in the back on the stitches. This stitch should have been here, but I made a mistake or wasn't it? No, it was not here. Somewhere I made a mistake. I think it's this one that maybe because it's right in the center, it, it's not looking that good. Yeah, so it, it is here. It's It was not a mistake, but it's not looking the best. But I'm going to see if I can fix it with a duplicate stitch just to make it look better. The rest of the sweater looks really, really nice. So I will have now three children's sweaters to give. So this is another ongoing project, but it is at the point that I have to think. I don't like to do sleeves. I have to decrease the sleeves and, and I have to think so that I can use the yarn and get the right size on the sleeves and the thing. Uh, this is a finished project that I forgot to mention. So I had made the, um, the cow and so now I have the hat. And the thing with this hat is that I had more fiber, but because I did bottom up, um, I was thinking, oh, I better finish or I'm not going to have enough yarn. And I do have yarn and I would have liked, have liked to, to do it a little bigger. Like I have, it is big, but I would like to have it uh, a little bit bigger, but it's okay. So uh, now, because I want, wanted a mindless thing, I decided to do this hat. This is 50% uh, yak, 50% merino, natural gray that I spun a while ago, um, a three ply. And I wanted to do a hat with it warm. And I start doing and I was knitting it, but I just start without thinking of the pattern. And since I had this, I, I really wanted to use these two books um, about Japanese patterns and finally I decided to use one so I was already here and but it was too large it was more looking like a beret than um, than a hat so I decided to undo it and I'm now working and I'm going to add a pattern you cannot see the pattern yet the other thing about this hat is 
I wanted to do it from the top down because I want to use the yarn up to the end. So I'm going to have the braids, maybe the cables up to here and then just have a ribbon pattern that can be folded up. But so when I, I wanted to start this as a top down hat and I have one one hat from Interweave that is a top down but it normally makes a, a very protrude triangle on the top so that was not what I wanted so I started with crochet I did a, a circle in crochet and then I increased a 10 that I made 10 short rows I, I don't know how you say that in English anyway but I used it with a simple crochet and I added I double it and then I put it in the knitting needle so I pick up stitches with the crochet hook and I thought it turned out kind of interesting so this is the center of my hat that was done with crochet and here is where I pick up the stitches to work with the knitting and now I have to to go on and on it so hopefully next time we are here you're gonna see some progress on it I really like the the fiber is really nice I think it's gonna be very hot um, so let's see but again that's where you have to give value to designers because um, you know it's wrap and wrap and do it again and frog it it you know to see if it really works um so acquisitions this month i don't have many acquisitions but it was my birthday in february and my daughter i've been training her for many years now and it seems like she learned now that if she has to give me something give me fiber she gave me socks i love socks too and i love the socks she gave me but she says that when I opened and I saw the socks, my face was, oh, socks. <laughs> so she learned fleece or fiber. And what she did is she gave me a gift card for uh, Fiber Garden. And I love Fiber Garden. I'm going to put a link also for them here. They're very fast. They ship very fast. Um, John is, is very, very nice. Sometimes I have doubts about something. I give him a call and he takes the time and talks to me and he says what is best or not. Uh, even I was looking for a, an electric spinning wheel. They don't have the spinning wheel that I have, but I explained the other spinning wheel and he made me think that, yeah, I should go for the spinning wheel that I want. So that was pretty cool. Um, it's, it's very nice when you deal with people that are very concerned about getting what's best for you. So, so I normally buy um, stuff from them. And I had bought this Shetland um, maybe on the last hand spinning show that we went. I think that was 2019. And I bought this Shetland because Shetland is a very interesting breed. So you have Shetland that have two, um, two coats, means that one part of it is soft and the other part is more hairy. Uh, and it's an easy one to separate the two coats, but it's a lot of work and nevertheless. And they have another Shetland that they, they use, um, that has one coat only. The other thing of Shetland is that there are Shetlands and Shetlands. So some are coarse and some are bred more towards softness. Um, like in Ontario, there is a farm and they were telling me that they do breed it for, for softness. And they have beautiful collars. That's the other thing of Shetlands. Shetlands have an array of collars, natural collars from cream to brown to gray and dark brown that would be considered black. So 
I thought to myself, I'm going to do a study on Shetland to get fleeces to get commercially prepared fleeces or fiber and stuff. But you know what? I have so much that I have to do. I need to work on, on the fiber. Uh, yeah, like he's loving my fleece on the ground. So, so my daughter gave me a gift certificate and I thought, hmm, so I have this one pound of Shetland. That's not going to give me anything. So I decided to use that gift certificate and I got three more bags of Shetland. Of course, she gave me a certain amount of money that I had to complete because we would buy one and maybe a half and I bought three. But now I have two pounds of fiber to spin. And what I like, if you see, even the gray that I got, because it's from a different batch, like this I got two years ago, and this I got um, now. And I know that they were sold out on the, on the Shetland uh, top because I had to wait a while to get the fleece. So this is a, a new batch. But you can see the difference in the color, I hope. And that's great because um, this is going to generate a difference in the fiber. Like normally you don't want the, the fiber to be different, but because I want to use this to um, fair eye on knitting, this change is going to be great. Like I can put everything in a pot if I want, and it's going to give me different colors. And then I also got one pound of what is considered black but it's more like a, a brown i don't know if you can see well because of the plastic so so this is the black it's it's a brownish black it's beautiful and this is the gray that I got now let me just open this one so that you can see the difference on the gray so if you put it together it's it's a huge difference right but this is also gray so that's gonna be nice like if I put both on a die pot each one is going to turn out with a different color. So, so that's really nice. Um, so in terms of projects, that's it. But two years ago, in 2019, I went to the um, Rhinebeck for the first time. And it was great. I was really happy. We, we even made a, a video about it. It was really nice. And my husband made me buy this fleece. It's so funny because whenever we go um, to shows together, I buy much more than I would by myself because I am very concerned about how much I'm spending and everything. But he just says, oh, why don't you buy it? <laughs> well, <laughs> since you insist, I have to. And, and I got this fleece. This is Cotswold. And it's nine pounds, almost 10 pounds of it. And I want to make a sweater for him. So Cotswold is a long wool. And it has a good amount of grease for a, for a long wool. Um, the other thing is the best way to do a long wood would be um, combed. I have a little comb, pair of combs, and it's going to take me a long time. I bought it two years ago and I did not wash it um, and at the end you're going to see our fleece, our dog is loving it, he's going on the top of it. So some of the characteristics of the Cotswold, it, and, and I have the, the information because this was a judged, um, a judged fleece that I got and so if I compare the Cotswold with the Shetland, the Shetland sheep, it has different sizes, different staples of fiber throughout the body. So it's not the same thing. 
um, the Cotswold tend to have the same staple. So I wanted to test it and I took one lock from different areas of the fleece that I have on the floor. And as you can see, they're very, very close, the staples of them. Um, long woods tend to be shiny. So when, because, and they are shiny because they don't have that much crimp, right? So if you get a, a merino fleece, first of all, the staple is going to be more like this. And second, it has a lot of curves that, that are the crimps. And the less crimp you have, the more shiny you are going to be because that's how you, re you receive the reflection um, of the light, right? So the light will reflect and it's going to give a shinier look to it. And this, this sheep has, it's mostly gray, but it has different colors of grays. And I'm going to have to, to see how I'm going to work with it. Um, if I'm going to just blend everything, most probably. And I want to do it for a sweater for my husband. It's going to take a while. It's going to be a long project because I have to wash all this fleece. I have to get the locks and put them in little laundry bags and wash one by one. But um, right now, because we are in spring, this is the time for me to do it. Otherwise, it's going to be in the winter. Uh, I want to use our wood stove to do it. So in the spring, normally we turn on the wood stove early in the morning and just to break the chill and that's it. But where we live, as you can see, we had 12 degrees this week and then we had 14, minus 14. So the fluctuation is, is very big. So I still, um, and, and we do have snow, like snowfall up to April and some flurries in May. So I'm sure I'm going to have time to, to hit some more. So this weekend, I'm going to take the time to just put all this fleece into, into the bags so that they are ready to be washed. And then I bought a um, scour uh, detergent that is a stronger detergent and it's for wool. And that's what I'm going to use to, to clean the wool. And from there, slowly, very slowly comb the fleece because it's going to take a long time. But I think it's going to be beautiful and he deserves it. He chose it. So sometimes we go out and he chooses it. So he's very happy now. This is going to be for him. But with nine pounds, I'm sure I'm going to have enough to do a lot of stuff with this coat wall. It's beautiful. So for today, it's all. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you, I was able to um, inspire you to do some different projects to work with color work or with the vertical stranded knitting or whatever. I hope you enjoyed it and that you have fun. So I'm looking forward to see you again. Thank you. Have a great day. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to have a little bit of my fiber on the ground. Bye.